Welcome to the TV and Film Review Podcast. I'm your host, Stuart Scott. Alongside me is Editor-in-Chief, David McGregor. Hello, hello. And our News Editor, Liam Kearney. Hello. So, what's the topics today? What do we have, David? We've only got a few topics to discuss today. We're just going to have a quick run round of the table, see what TV we've all been watching this week, what's been good, what's been crap, and then we're going to touch on uh, some news stories of the week, uh, which Liam, I think, is going to take us through, and then we're going to finish off with some uh, Oscar stuff. Okay, good stuff. So, uh, with that in mind, I mean, do you want me to tell you what I've been watching this week? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I ha- mainly sitcoms. Started off, I was... At the start of the week, I've been watching uh, Mom. I don't know if either of you have watched that yet. No. Have you seen it? That's uh, the thing with Anna Faris? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I've not, not had a chance. I saw the pilot, and then that was it. Gave up after the pilot. Yeah, I, do you know what? I thought it was going to be rubbish. And I absolutely hated Anna Faris at the start. Um, you know, couldn't stand her. She was way over the top for me. Don't like her in Scary Movie or anything like that. But she's starting to grow on me. And do you know what? There's... Do you know Alison Janney? She's been, oh, in, yeah. she's been in loads of stuff. She's in that as well, and she's the one that, that kind of really steals the show. Uh, but I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying that. Uh, I, I have to say, for all the kind of sitcoms that I've watched, um, all the pilots, it's, it's one of the better ones. Um, and I think it's not been renewed yet for season two, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. I, I, how, how are the ratings, Liam? I think they're all right. I don't think... I think they're probably just all right. I think for, like, with... Because it's on CBS, so obviously you've got stuff like the Big Bang Theory and all that, which is just like yeah. a monster. So it's I like, think comparing it, it yeah, if you compare it to that, then it's not doing very well. But I think it's, I think it's doing all right. You're right. I think it could come back. I think it, it probably more depends what CBS want to have like new next season more than anything else as to whether it comes back. Yeah. Or not. Do you know? Interestingly, I think it's actually probably got a better chance of coming back than um, the other um, CBS sitcom, the one with uh, Robin Williams. Oh. The name skips me. The crazy ones, yeah. The crazy ones. <laughs> crazy <laughs> times terrible. indeed. It, it's, ba- it's bad when a show's out. Do you guys watch it? Uh, do you know, I watched the first three or four, gave up. Yeah. Well, like, at the end, <laughs> there's out- outtakes of the episodes, and it's bad when the outtakes from the episodes are funnier than the actual episodes. I don't think oh, it's right. good for a Tom team. That's right. I remember. I remember watching the when I watched the first few episodes. The, the outtakes at the end weren't actually the the best part. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not sure what's happened to Sarah Michelle Gellar recently, but I, for me, she, she's turned into an actor. Buffy fans aren't going to like this, but I think she's struggling uh, when she's doing the drama stuff, and I think she's struggling doing comedy. I don't know where she fits really. She's never really done anything good since Buffy, really, has she? Yeah. She kind of bit of a one trick pony. It's uh, Melissa Joan Hart syndrome. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Clarissa explains uh, all. That's the one I. Oh, well, she wasn't quite one trick. She did. Um... She did Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, yeah. But still, since then, you know. Yeah. Time hasn't treated her well. Yeah. Moving on from Mom, I more sitcoms. I watched. Um, there's a bunch of them on Tuesday that I I've got round to. I've got rid of most of them. Um, the two newer ones I'm watching that well that have still caught me so far is the Goldbergs. And Trophy Wife, um, both the Goldbergs is okay. It's um, it's been fine this um, this week. It was fine again. It's very kind of eighties thing. I, I know there's a sitcom coming up in a couple of weeks time. That's a nineties sitcom, Surviving Jack. Oh, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Very kind of similar lines. I think. I mean, I don't know how much if, if you've seen any of the Goldberg, but it's it's okay. It's nothing mind blowing. Oh, I think I, I think it should be fine. I think I must admit I think it's probably my favourite new comedy. I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. But then I Who's think your favourite character? Uh, the mum. I don't know her name. I don't know. I must admit I don't really know any of their names apart from like the mum, the dad, and Barry. And I think he's the only guy. Yeah, Barry. That's right. Yeah. Um, but um, I think the mum. I think she's just hilarious. And like the episode this week's one where they're going to the dance and that. That's was, right. That I'm, I'm oh, quite an eighties. So freak. awkward. Yeah. yeah it was. I'm quite an 80s freak, so I think that's why I quite like it. But no, I... Yeah, do you know what? It, it, it wasn't bad, and, it, and it's a show that I'm happy to stick with. Mm. I think it's all right. For me, Trophy Wife, the other one that was on, had that, to be honest, I, I I really enjoy that. I think it's I think it's great, and it's probably my favourite new sitcom um, this year. It's, uh, I mean, the kids steal the show. You've got a kind of, if you're not familiar with the premise, you've got, um, you've got a dad 
um, who's who's probably not the central character really, but he's got three wives. He's you know he's he's on his third one, and um, he's got kids with them all, um, and it's just sort of interaction around the family. I've I I'm not I haven't watched Modern Family, but I know I've heard some people compare it to it. Um, you know, trying to sort of rip off that idea. Um, but I, do you know what? It's very funny. And the kids steal the show. There, I mean, I mean, there's three of them, and um, especially the two boys. They, they're brilliant. And it's it, it's a show I'll be gutted um, when it gets cancelled. And I say and I say when because the ratings are, are bloody awful. Yeah. And it, it, um, yeah, go for it. Malin, Malin Ackerman. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure that's right. Uh, I, I quite like her. Uh, didn't realise she was she had a show this year. Yeah, yeah, she's she, and, she, and do you know what? She's she's all right in it. She's pretty good. Um, and it, and it is actually quite funny. And it's had quite um good critical acclaim actually. Um, it's do you know it's it's most people seem to think it's all right. It's yeah. it's just for people aren't watching it. I was gonna say I think the problem is, um, I think it's got kind of the Cougar Town syndrome where people don't like. Well, I've read that people are thinking it's because it's called Trophy Wife, and people associate that with a, you know, kind of gold digging type thing or whatever it doesn't have good connotations so people have avoided it because it's cultural which is ridiculous but yeah there you go whether that's true or not i don't know um, and then the other one i've, I've been sticking with on a tuesday is a uh, mindy project which you know, i really like that this year i think it's gotten so much better than it was the first season and yeah it was good the first season yeah do you, do you, i remember Stu, when uh, <laughs> when, we, when we when we first saw the trailer I, yeah. I remember watching the trailer for Mindy Project and thinking this is going to be so bad, <laughs> like really awful. And then I think I remember the pilot episode. I think it was you that reviewed it for the website, didn't it you? It was, I. And it was terrible. Yeah, the the pilot wasn't good, and I was I was really against it. I think I was, was it the second episode that hooked me, like the second week, and uh, it just hooked me in, and yeah, I love it now. Yeah, it's it, one it, of my one of my regulars. It just got good, and and do you know what I love even more? Have you noticed this season they've um, they've cancelled the most annoying theme tune in history? They've they've sort of slimmed it right down. Oh, do you know I've never even noticed? Have you not? Oh, it was awful. Just the... that, yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that's what they've left in. But because it, before it was some sort of thirty seconds of extended. Yeah. Oh, it was just it, hated it. So I'm glad they've got rid of that. I quite like it. It's quite nineties. It's got like a nineties like ringtone on your yeah. Nokia thirty three ten, isn't it? <laughs> the, the the other sitcoms. I'll come back to Community. I'm sure that's probably on your list as well. Um, the Neighbours was the other one I watched, um, and it's a show that um, I think I'm gonna finish up with. It's not had a great season two, I didn't think. Yeah, um, you and um, Luis really liked it the first year. Oh it? yeah, I loved it. I loved the first season. Uh, it was so. It was so weird, it never took itself seriously. It was like the Mindy Project, it had a really rubbish pilot and then it and then it came on leaps and bounds. Um there was some really funny characters, some funny stories in the first season. But this year it it's not really got to me and there's um, I've got too much other stuff to watch and it's one that I think sadly is um is gonna go. And the same unfortunately with uh, Nashville. Oh really? Uh, yeah, I started watching Nashville. I was I think I was maybe about three episodes behind. So I was catching up with Nashville this week. I mean, it's it's a good show. I I do I do like it, but for me, if I was to list all the current shows I watch and that I'm trying to catch up on, Nashville, I'd have to say was at the bottom, yeah. near the bottom yeah. anyway. Yeah. For, there's there's something about it that's not kind of pulling me in every week. I don't like that they seem to like. I mean, not that I wanted it to be like Glee or anything, but I think like the way they've cut out the songs. There's, they don't seem to feature. It seems to be like they're more kind of go down the soap kind of route and having all these like big cat, like dramas, yeah. And, you know, shootings and stuff like that, and all the kind of the music side of it just seems to have totally been dropped. Yeah, uh, well, that's a shame because that was its big hook, wasn't it? Having the the songs in at the same time. Yeah, I I thought um, especially in the first season, I thought well, that was one of the main attractions. You know, it was um, it was good getting the songs in there, and the songs actually felt. You know, it wasn't like a musical sort of TV show like Glee. The yeah. songs actually felt like they fit into the story, and they, yeah, you know, yeah. they really added something. Um, whereas this season, it's just, you, you know what? It, it's all right. It's not bad, but it's just, I think it's time for me uh, to to step out of that. And yeah, the, it's just not cutting it with the rest of the, the rest of your schedule. Yeah, sort of which which is now, um, you know, I've just picked up True Detective. I was watching that this week, two episodes into that with Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey. Oh yeah, we were speaking about this last week, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, Matthew. 
I mean, I'm still not had a shot of it yet. Matthew Need McConaughey is okay. is brilliant, really good in it. Yeah, I'll tell you another show I actually started watching. Well, picked up, started watching season two this week was uh, Mr. Selfridge with uh, Jeremy Piven. Yeah, it's on my Netflix list actually. Um, I just seen that season two was starting over here. Yeah, um, I enjoyed season one. It, you know, it wasn't a great show, but it was one that, you know, I I'd put it on my uh, Sky Sky box just for anyone. Anyone listening out there, if you ever hear us referring to, you know, a Sky Boss or Sky Plusing something or anything, it's um, it's our version of what Americans call DVR. Is that right? Yeah, TiVo, is it not? Yeah, yeah, it's a bo- it's a box you record your TV shows on. So I, I had Mr. Selfridge recorded on. Saw season two start and recorded it, and, and again, it's fine. It's it's a show that I'll probably won't watch all of season two. I'll probably get rid of it. Jeremy Piven's very good. The problem is I only care, I think, about two of the characters. Um, the rest of the cast, I, I, it was one of those shows where, I mean, maybe it wasn't true, but they seem to have ditched almost everyone from season one and almost got a brand new cast for season two. It certainly felt that way when I was watching it. You know, I was like, there's all this influx of new characters, um, which, I, you know, I'm sure some of them will turn out fine, but, you know, that was it. And uh, as I said, the, the, the last show that I was watching was Community. I don't know if uh, either of you have watched that this week. Uh, I haven't seen this week's episode. Am I right in saying that that's Donald Glover's last? Absolutely. Well, to try. his last main episode, yeah. Have you, have you seen it, Liam? I've never seen Community in my life. I've, oh, I, know, oh, I know, I know. I can tell you're all going to so gang good. up on me for it, but no, I've never <laughs> seen it. Uh, yeah, in, in, in that in that case, I'll, I'll touch on it briefly. I mean, it was. Well, um, I know that it was his last episode. I kind of. Yeah, it was. He he was. Uh, he's left it left the show now. It was his his farewell. It, it, and to be honest, the episode itself, I didn't think was that great. It's oh, had, really? It, yeah, it's had, it's had quite a good start. To, you know, we discussed this last week. I think. You know, the season started off quite well. I didn't think this episode was great, but it was um, passable. There was a lot of good material in this that should have made a good episode. But for some reason, I, I, I didn't think it was okay. I mean, it, you, you know, you've got the kind of emotional bits near the end and all that, which, which are fine. But, um, yeah, let me know what you think when you've watched it. Yeah, um, do. Yeah, who, who wants to go next? What have you been watching? I guess I'll go next. I've not yet had my fix of uh, Parenthood. That's my that's my big one, uh, the one that I wait for every week. <laughs> that, that's been really great this season, uh, especially the second half of this season. What season's it on now? Ah, uh, five. five. Just about to finish mm. five. Wow. Mm, I don't think it's been good as four. I think four four was an amazing. Oh no, four with the cancer storyline and everything. Oh, absolutely. Amazing. Brilliant. But I think yeah, the first half's not been as. I think you see the second half. Now they've got rid of the silly mayor storyline. I think that was just ridiculous. Well, personally, nah. personally. Uh, the only stuff that's kind of annoyed me this year is the stuff with Amber. It's not been like they were making him. What's his name? The guy from Friday Night Lights. Was it Ryan? Uh. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but making him out to be like a great guy and all that, pure superhero at the start of the year, and then just get rid of him. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that stuff wasn't really doing it for me, and it feels as if they've just been kind of contriving it to get to this point now. I'll see how this week's episode was. I'll give that a wee watch tonight. I think. What else? Oh, House of Lies. That was back um, last week. Oh, is that um, back? Oh. It, do you know it's not been that good so far? This this week's episode was good. Yeah, big big fail for me there. I thought you were talking about House of Cards. <laughs> oh well, House of Cards uh, is that next week? That's back. That's yeah, Valentine's, no, Valentine's Day House of Cards. Oh, is it is it as late as that? Yeah. Um, Even then, that's only what two three weeks. Yeah. But no, House of Lies with uh, Don Cheadle and uh, Kristen Bell. I was going to say Veronica Mars, that Kristen Bell. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. It's it's been a bit of a slow starter this year. So another one's been a lot of change and they've kind of split up the main cast and it's you not, know, I don't know if I like Is it. Is the format still the same? I know, I watched the first season, you know, and it was um, it was all kind of very slick with him talking to the camera and, um, you know, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on um, and, and I thought it was alright, but it, it didn't do enough for me to get, get a second season watch. There's not as much of that, the whole um, breaking the fourth wall thing yeah. this year. They kind of slowed down a little bit in season two as well. But it's more about the characters now than it is about like the business pitches and everything. Like it used to be all the kind of the drama surrounding them, you know, like the the actual business. But now it's uh, more about their lives and yeah, I don't know. I still like it, but it's more for the characters than the story these days. I'm trying to think what else I've been watching. Oh, Justified. Justified's been back as well. Love it. It's so good. It's it's really underrated as well. It's another one you don't really hear much of here because it's 
hidden away on that's right. Five I, US plus four or whatever. Yeah, I was just going to say that it's, it's it's a show that's kind of uh, it's never really got much acclaim over here in the UK. Um, I I know it's certainly picked up since Netflix took it on. Yeah, I think the first three or four seasons are on Netflix. Yeah. This season, it's it's just more of the same, really. It's so good. I love yeah. it. It's a show that I really should have watched because I, I love Tim Timothy Olyphant. I think he's uh, I think he's pretty good. Um, yeah, he's he's just so suave and cool, and it's kind of it's like what I wanted Hawaii Five O to be, the remake. Yeah, just to watch that. Nah, I've I dropped it. Season three, I'm afraid. They got the little guy from Heroes in, didn't they? Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah, um, Masioka. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, do you know it's it's still a fine show. I could go back and watch it if it was on the TV. Uh, it's just too procedural. It's too much like CSI and all that. The only kind of thing in that style that I watch nowadays is Elementary. Um, just because that's still a little bit different. Is it mm. better than Sherlock? I prefer it to, Sher- uh, to Sherlock. It's a bit oh, more really? easy watching. I like. <laughs> I must be one of the only people that hates Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> oh, I wow. really don't like him. In anything? Nothing at all? Nothing I've seen him in, no. Have you not seen The Hobbit? What about Smaug? Smaug? No, I've the dragon. Seen, I, I seen like half the first Hobbit and I didn't like it. <laughs> uh, obviously I wasn't in that. And I watched the first half of that about the... WikiLeaks guy. That's right. Do you know he? Do you know he's he's done a lot recently as well. Um, I think I, I spoke to you last week and I touched on it earlier. I th- you know, I think Matthew McConaughey is probably one of those actors that have had a really really great twelve months. Um, but I think uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is the other one. I think he's. Uh, I think he's had a great year. He's been loads. Yeah, he's, he's uh, had a lot of work. But I, I just wa- I watched him last week in uh, August, Osage County. He's in that as well. Is he in that? Is he in that as well? Yeah, he has had a busy year. He, he has. He's been he's been in loads, and and I, I think I think he's pretty decent. It's uh, I I've I've only watched the first season of Sherlock. I'm not up to date with it, um, but I think he's I think he's pretty good. And I think he's going to be a name that sticks around for a while. Sorry, Stu. Yeah, probably. I I'm just not a fan. I think yeah, Johnny Lee Miller's much better. I can feel the hate mail coming. How do you feel about Justified ending? Because the next season's going to be its last one, isn't it? Oh no, uh, next season is not going to be a good one for me because I think uh, Boardwalk Empire finishes next year as well, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And Mad, uh, Mad Men, is that this year? Oh, Mad Men too. Oh, God. Is that this year it finishes, yeah? It could be, actually, yeah. That's going to be the last season. Yeah. Uh, so I'm about, I'll need to find lots of new stuff to watch. Uh, one of the new things that I picked up this, well, this week, last week, uh, Always Sitting in Philadelphia. I've just, I've heard non-stop about it on uh, a few other podcasts that I listen to. And it is honestly the funniest show that I've ever watched. Wow. It's just so, That's a so bold, ridiculous. bold claim. After that, it'd probably be Community, to be honest. There's nothing that I really laugh out loud to, but this just runs away with it by a mile. It's just so daft, and uh, it's nine years old, maybe. Yeah, it's getting a big, it's getting a big push through Netflix as well, isn't it? Yeah, um, and that was uh, one of my friends told me about it a little while ago as well, and said I should watch it. And this is me just getting around to it, so I'll need to need to catch up with everything else as well. Do you know what's strange, right? I feel I feel like. I, th- I think, you know, we're only 20 minutes in or whatever, and I feel like I've already mentioned Netflix, you know, two or three times. Guaranteed if we'd done this maybe two years ago or something, Netflix wouldn't even get a mention. Yeah, no, totally. Probably not, no, no. Totally. Such a big player now. Yeah, they done, done us a fair favour with the feature in November as well. Um, mm. Got us got a, a fair bit of traffic in. That's right. If anyone wants to know what to watch on Netflix, check out our site, tvandfilmreview.com. It's on there. We'll make a little link dump at the bottom of the article that this is going in. Link in all the all the reviews and things that we mentioned. Any videos, anything like that as well. Trailers or anything. Pretty much everything for me. Um, Archer, I've been watching a little bit of that as well. Oh, is that good? I've always meant to watch that. Um, it's quite good. I, I feel that because I've started watching at the same time, it's always sunny. It's just getting a bit underwhelmed for me. But uh, yeah, it's, it's worth picking up if you like that kind of thing. People keep telling me it's a bit like Bob's Burgers, but I hate Bob's Burgers. I love Bob's Burgers. Yeah, I think you'll like Archer then. Okay. <laughs> it's that, that same kind of uh, very dry humour. Right, okay. Um, so what about you, Liam? What, uh, what have you been watching this week? Uh, this week, what have I been watching? The last three episodes of CB Hollow, because the season finale of that aired this week. Because someone for their website reviewed it. Have you guys been watching it at all? Or? Well, I, I watched the first, first episode... And, and do you know what? It, it was totally bizarre. It was really wacky, um, really over the top. I think um, John Cho, who I really like, was in it. And then I was yeah. gutted because he got his, um, I'm sure he got his head chopped off or something in the in the first episode. Um, and I didn't really pick it up from there, but I've heard really good things. 
It is good. It is. It, John Cho still pops up in and out of it, even though he did get killed, bumped off in the pilot. <laughs> spoilers, Liam. Uh, spoilers. Jeez, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's not dead. <laughs> well, he is dead, but he's... that's yeah. just how the weirdness of it. He's, he's still there. Yeah. Car carries John Cho's head around with him. That's like his sidekick. <laughs> well, the ghost of John Cho. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, um, it's still a bit r weird and a bit wacky, but it's. I think it's so bonkers, it's good, to be honest. And there's a few twists at the end, which I will mention for spoilers, um, which yeah. were good. And um, John Noble, who's for Finch fans, Walter Bishop, he comes into it. He basically just plays Walter Bishop, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but he's really good in it. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the second, because that's it. It's now got picked up for a second season already so it got picked up pretty early didn't it, it? Did, yeah i think they instead of giving it like a full first season they've just given it they've just kept the first season at 13 episodes and it's given it a new season instead so. uh do you know it's something that everyone that mentions it to me yeah they all love it i i, I don't know if it's as big over in the states but people here they, they go mad yeah. for it did you ever watch the original movie there was one maybe about 10 years ago yeah that that was the tim burton one yeah ah uh, yeah that must have been it that, that was good. I liked that. Who, who was it who was in that again? Well, it must it have been was... Johnny Depp if it was a Tim Burton movie, surely. Oh, so it was. So it was. Surely. Guys, it's working with anyone else. Yeah, exactly. Can, can I ask? Can, can I can I sidetrack here um, on uh, your opinion on Johnny Depp? Because I don't know if I'm in the minority here, but I, you know, like you were saying earlier, Stu, with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, I mean, I I really don't like Johnny Depp. It, well, not, not so much I don't like Johnny Depp. I think, you know, he's a good actor and he's, you know, he's, I, I can appreciate that. But for some reason, I just don't like the films he's in, and I don't like his performances, and I've ended up really not liking Johnny Depp. See, I don't like like the Pirates of the Caribbean, um, all that kind of, all these kind of recent stuff, really. Yeah. Uh, the two ones that come to mind when I think of him that I really like, uh, Sweeney Todd, the the musical. Yeah. That they've done, loved that. I thought that was a great film, and. Going back to the nineties with uh, Donnie Brasco. Oh, that that that's what I was thinking. You know, that that's a great film. I, I can pick out some, you know, Johnny Depp um, performances from a few years. You know, going back to the nineties and things like that. But what I, I think I looked at his um, filmography recently, and I had to go really far back to find a Johnny Depp film that I'd watched and enjoyed. It, it just uh, doesn't do it for me. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna have to check it now that you've mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, while you're doing that, Liam. Sorry, continue. <laughs> um, what else are we watching? Um, just to say, yeah, I agree with you, David. I'm not a great fan of Johnny Depp, and I don't like the Pirates of the Caribbean films either. But anyway, uh, what else are we watching? Uh, the following that came back this week, so I watched that earlier. That was good. How's that getting I... on? <sighs> I don't. I don't know. I was one of these people that ended up just watching it because I hated it so much in the first season. It was just ridiculous, yeah. and I ended up watching I, it just to see this is ridiculous. Speaking of people that you're fed up with, if you if you go to the cinema regular, oh um, god, it, I can it, see it, where it, this is going. In the UK, <laughs> the, you will have a hatred for Kevin Bacon. Um, just to just to explain anyone listening who's not in the UK, uh, we we have the pleasure of every time you go to. Uh, cinema visit for a certain cinema chain they probably I suspect they're the biggest chain in the UK so there's a good chance whenever you go and see a film at the start of every single film you know after they've done all the adverts you get Kevin Bacon promoting a new mobile phone I don't know product or plan or doing doing something silly and if you if you're a regular cinema goer <laughs> it could just be fucking annoying <laughs> It's it's very tedious. At least it's not the Conga adverts anymore. Oh, well, that's I true. suppose that's the bright side. <laughs> yeah, those were bad. Sorry, the fo so the following is. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't. I mean, I'm surely sure we can spoil the end of this. I um I watched the first season up until maybe I I gave up three or four episodes from the end. You know, I thought it was utterly ridiculous. I mean, what what happened in the end of the first season? Well, at the end they found the cult. Um, Joe Carroll the the serial killer guy apparently yep. got blown up in the end, so everyone thought he was dead. And oh, let me pretty guess, much he's not. No spoiler, um, he's not. <laughs> uh, shock. There was a, a convenient trap door in the building that got blown up that he was in, so he got out. Um, and then pr oh dear. pretty much everyone, apart from Kevin Bacon and the guy who plays Iceman in X Men, whose name I can't remember, everyone else died. So it was pretty much just them. So now, in the second season, it kicks off a year later, and all of his followers are coming back, killing people again. So, it was it was all right. Um, unfortunately, the character I really hate, Emma, she's still in it. So I don't know why she didn't oh, get no. killed off. But yeah, no, it was it was all right. I mean, it wasn't as bad 
Did they uh, save the kid? Yeah, the kid is now in witness protection, so he's not in anymore. But you know, the kid's alright. I don't think yeah. they could kill off a kid. That's, yeah, yeah, probably. So yes, that's, it started off alright, but again, I thought the last season started off alright and then got ridiculous, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and the only other thing I've been watching, like, obviously I've been watching a few stuff that you guys have mentioned, like the Mindy Project and Goldbergs and stuff. So the only other thing, probably Revenge, I doubt you guys will watch it, but... Well, with Revenge, I got... I got told, I, I didn't watch it when it first came on, and I remember getting, it was maybe halfway through season two, and someone had mentioned to me, you know, oh, you've got to watch Revenge, you've got to watch Revenge, you know, season one is great, it loses it slightly in season two, you know, it's not as good, but, you know, season one of Revenge, brilliant, go yeah. and watch it. Definitely. So I, I think it, it was one of the shows that I uh, first started watching on Netflix, me and my girlfriend started um, plowing through all the episodes, I thought it really it had a really strong start, but then, I mean... You could tell it was a network show because, I mean, they were dragging it out for 20, you know, 22 or 24 episodes, however many it was. Yeah. Because by the end, you know, the, the first maybe 12, 13 episodes, really strong, really good stuff. And then by the end of the first season, there was just so much filler, so much utter rubbish that they were just throwing in there just to fill up time almost. Um, and then I, when I got to the end of the first season, I was kind of like, eh, well, you know, it's it was all right. It was decent enough. But then I'd heard such negative stuff about season two that I thought, you know what, I'm not even going to bother. Yeah, well, I agree. First season was amazing. Second season wasn't great. I mean, I don't think it was... I didn't think it was quite as bad as a lot of people were saying, but yeah, it wasn't as good. And I think the third season is it's slowly getting back to the way to the first season again. But you're right. I think they kind of need to... I, mean, I wouldn't say compare it to Lost as such, but I think they need to do a Lost and say, you know, we're ending this season or, you know, next season or whatever and give it an end date because they can't just, it's getting a bit, you know, how for how long can she kind of take, keep re- taking revenge on these yeah. people? And they've got competition now, Liam. Betrayal. Oh, yes, Betrayal. Wait, has that started? Is that this, is that this month? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's no, it started in, se- in, the, in September. Oh, was that? Oh, of course, so it yeah, was, yes. It's finished now, that's it. Had its 13 <laughs> and done, so I don't think it'll be back. Being gone, won't be back. No. And now they've got... I'm, I'm, I'm it, sure we missed out, yeah. Yeah, I know, sounds like it. I don't know, I watched the first 20 minutes of it and had to give up, it was just... Oh, what, what is your threshold? Do, do you have a sort of limit to, to how long you can go for a drama? I don't know. No, um, I don't know. I can watch some utter rubbish, to be perfectly honest. And there's probably stuff I'm watching now that I'm not enjoying, and I can just keep watching it. Like *Suburgatory* is just got dreadful, but I'm, I'm sticking with it. But I don't know. I, 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 I suppose specifically for you know, like a pilot episode. You know, so you're watching a pilot. You've never seen the show before. How long do you give it to to get get your attention? I usually, uh, usually I'd, I'd watch most of a pilot. I'll get through the pilot. It's only if I fall asleep. Like Betrayal, I fell asleep watching it, and True Detective, um, I know I should probably watch it. But oh fe- yeah, you didn't like that. I fell asleep during it. That's usually a sign that I'm probably not going to enjoy it, so I don't watch it. So if I fall asleep, I don't watch it. That's usually my threshold. What about you guys? Yeah, I, I like you. If it's a, you know, if it's a sitcom, you know, it, it it's got to be pretty bad if it. I don't even get through the twenty minutes. Uh, but there's there's been a few of them. There's um, with the drama. I tr- I try and give it the full, you know, forty minutes or hour, however long it is, and uh, it, it's hard though. I mean, I know what you mean. Sometimes I watch it. I watched um, one just two weeks ago, the one with Josh Holloway, Intelligence. Got Intelligence. That's the one, yeah. And I, I think I got maybe t- again fifteen twenty minutes in, and I knew it wasn't. It, you know, it was a show that I probably wasn't gonna like. Um, so I decided to, you know, waste that time, you know, checking Twitter or something. <laughs> Instead, something more productive. I, I, I don't, I, have either of you seen that show? No, but I'm really gutted that it's not doing well. Um, I, I really wanted it to do well. I like um, Josh Holloway. Just because Holloway. I like yeah. uh, the guys from it. Um, obviously Josh Holloway and... Sorry, I'm going to IMDb. Yeah, it's going to annoy me too much. But while you're looking, I didn't. Yeah, no, I I watched it, but like you, David, I thought by the end, I thought it's not for me. I'm not going to watch anymore. So yeah. I watched it. Since. Do you know it's it's a shame because I uh, I I like most of the lost characters. I you know Lost for me was one of you know love it or hate it for me it was one of my it probably is my f- most favorite show of all time. So I always have this thing where I'm always consistently looking out for people who are in Lost and seeing what other projects are picking up. More often than not, I'm disappointed. I mean, you had uh, John Locke. Oh, what's his name? Terry O'Quinn. 
Terry O'Quinn. I knew it was an O something, yeah. It was Bill Young Lee that I was thinking of. And it turns out that he was only in one episode, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, well. Right, where have we got to? Where do we sidetrack from? Well, speaking of then, of say that you follow people from Lost going into other shows, like obviously Donald Glover's left Community, he needs getting his own comedy, I think it's on FX. Would you guys watch that because you like Community? Or... Um, I will watch it because I like Donald Glover. I think yeah, he's, I'm, I'm I, the same. I watched one of his uh, stand-up shows and he is absolutely top class. He's, he's such a good comedian, good at everything he does. Uh, I've got two of his albums in the house. Is he not a bit of a rapper as well? Yeah, yeah, I am um, two of his yeah his music albums. I mean, on my on my iPad, and they're, they're good. You know, it's not just because uh, of who he is, of because in community. You know, he's, what he's what, kind, a what kind of rap is it, Stu? Is it sort of hardcore gangster rap? Um, no, it's like it's hard to describe it. Uh, it's a little bit like self-deprecating, the way can Eminem used to be. Yeah, but at the same time, it's it's well thought out and. Uh, it's not too kind of gangster. It's not like dead auto tuning like Lil Wayne and all that. It's good. You should give it a listen. He's get. In fact, there's a video for one of his latest tunes called Sweatpants. Uh, Sweatpants. Fa- <laughs> Sweatpants. Yep. I think I put it on my Facebook. You should get a link on there. Um, I'll put that in the link dump as well. And it's like community outtakes. Uh, it's dubbed into the video. Um, it's it's really good. There was another one as well, Freaks and Geeks, uh, a while back. That was just as good. Do you know that that's a good TV show as well? Have you ever watched that? Freaks and uh, Geeks. No, it was a wee bit, wee bit before my time, I think. What was that, 90? Um, oh, no. Uh, yeah, maybe. Early 90s, maybe? Yeah. Um, or something. I'm, just, I'm checking that for you just now. <laughs> but no, he's, he's really good. I say he's stand-up comedy and all that's uh, pretty tall. You were talking about how, how long you guys give shows before you give up on them as well. Yeah. I've, I've usually got I have an eight, uh, three episode rule. If it's not good by three episodes, then I'm just giving up on it completely. It's got to be really bad for me to just pack it in altogether. The one that I've broken it for is Breaking Bad. Hated Breaking Bad up until about episode five, episode five or six, uh, when he blows up the the guy's whatever it is. He's like we apartment thing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That was when it got good for me. Um. Hated it up until that point. It was just too slow. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd go as far to say I hated it. I certainly <laughs> didn't see the hype after I'd watched maybe the first three or four episodes, and I, I, you know, I, I persevered with it. I knew it would probably turn good, and I'm glad I did. Uh, but the, there's very, very few shows that I've, I actually do that with, and they tend to be ones that I know have been hyped up so much. Like I did that with The Wire. I remember watching The Wire the first, uh, you know, two or three episodes, not really getting it. Um, not understand what the hype was and then, you know, sticking with it and then, you know, it's one of my favourite shows of all time. Do you know, I find that really hard to go back and watch. Um, I, I never watched it the first time around and people keep telling me to watch it. It's, it's better than Sopranos, everything. Yeah. But I think because it's so dated, it's, it's really tough to, to identify with it, you know? Yeah. How do you, I mean, have you ever watched, speaking of, you know, shows dating... Um, and dating well and badly. Have you have you caught anything from the eighties recently? You know, sitcom wise. Um, like for instance, I was watching I was watching Cheers the other day, um, and do you know what? It actually ages pretty well. You know, but barroom jokes. You know, it's all set around a bar. It, you know, it, it it's still pretty good actually. Obviously, the sort of um, you know the technology's moved on now. Uh, you know, you're watching it in standard definition and whatnot. But I, it, it's actually pretty a pretty good watch and holds up quite well. Um, where I, I was also watching, I think it was on some obscure channel doing repeats, and I caught some um, of the Cosby Show, and yeah, that yeah, that was my reaction after watching a bit of it. I was kind of, mm. yeah, what happened? God, that probably the oldest, the oldest sitcom that I've watched is. Uh, I used to love Happy Days when I was at school. That's right. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I got home from school, it was always on uh, on Sky One or something like that. Um, they used to run reruns of it, um, and I loved it. I don't even know why I loved it. It's just, I uh, one of those things. You wanted to be the Fonz. Uh, no, no. See, I hated that character. I thought that was really, I, I never, I never got it. There was, it wasn't the thing. It was just, I don't know. I liked, I liked the show for some reason. Do you know what, Stuart? I hope they make a Happy Days movie, and I hope they cast Benedict Cumberbatch as the Fonz <laughs> for your utter seethe. I'm trying to think what other kind of TV news I've got. Oh, Grey's Anatomy comes back tonight. Oh, I'm really excited for that. Uh, no. No? <laughs> no. With April having to pick between Matt and Jackson. What's that come back tonight? 
Oh, yep, tonight it's on. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, 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 no. No, I'm talking rubbish. 26 of February, isn't it? Uh, you, yeah, you, you, that's weeks off, yeah. That sounds more right. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was excited all day. But you know what, that so... might be a solid uh. link, because that was one of my news things I was going to talk about. Yeah, let's, let's move on to news. That as a seamless yeah. link. Well done, well it. done, Stu. <laughs> so, one of the news things I was going to say was obviously that um, Ellen, is it Pompey? I don't even see her second. Yeah, yeah. And Patrick Dempsey, who's obviously Meredith and Derek and Grease. You probably won't be interested in this, David. But anyway. um, That's fine. I've obviously signed. You should be. <laughs> yeah, you should be. I've obviously signed new deals to stay on for two more seasons of Grease Anatomy. So, I don't know, Stu, what do you think? Are you quite happy with that? Because obviously, um, well, Christina's leaving at the end of this season. Yeah, that that's the the big thing. As uh, this is Sandra O's last season on the show, and she's one of the better characters. But she's gotten rubbish this year. Yeah. So... I think they're trying to destroy her character because she's leaving. Maybe, yeah, that could be what it is. Um, just so people aren't bitter about it. But Ellen Pompeo, yeah, she's obviously she's the the title character and everything, but she's never really done it for me. I don't think she's the star of the show. She's not the best character. But Patrick Dempsey, he's the big one. He's like one of the everyone's favourite, yeah. you know. So it's it's good that he's staying on as well. Yeah, definitely, I think it's good. That he's can, I think... can I just check, Liam? Yeah. Did you say two more seasons? Yeah, they've signed for two more seasons. Doesn't necessarily mean it's getting two more seasons. But... I was going to say, how, how many seasons is it on? Ten. It feels like it's been on since... Uh... I'm sure it's ten. Yeah, I'm sure it's season ten. That's got to um, be one of the longest running. Yeah, probably. Yeah. It's it's bothering on soap opera-ish. Um, just with the amount of stuff that goes on at this hospital. <laughs> just make sure if you're holding in Seattle, just don't get hurt. Yeah. Just make sure <laughs> make sure you've got your insurance yeah. covered. How, how, how's the um, cast been on the show? I mean, obviously, you know, a show going on ten seasons now. Has it had, has it had a big turnaround of... Um, yeah, fairly so. Has yeah. it, yeah. it kept its sort of core people? A, um, a, some of them. Yeah, it's about, what, five or six of them have probably been there since the beginning. Probably. Yeah. But yeah, I think... Um, Sandro, Patrick Dempsey and Ellen Pompeo, and then... Alex. I forget the, the guy's name, Alex. Yeah. Catherine Heigl's in that, isn't she? She, she was. She was in it. Oh, she's she gone. She's gone. Uh, too famous. It's, surely it's, it's long enough to, uh, to be spoiled, but she, she kind of left in bad terms. I don't think she'll ever come back. No. I think, yeah, she thought she was going to... Because that was when she was just hitting the movies. I think she thought yeah. she was going to be big. Not that she's not been big in movies, but I think she thought she was going to have this glittering career. And so yeah, she and she's just kind of uh, <laughs> floundered a bit, hasn't she? Yeah. Um, but the the guys that have been there from the start are really good. Some of the guys that have left uh, were really good as well. Yeah. I quite like most of the new folks that are in. What's her name? Uh, the girl from... She was in Veronica Mars. She played Mark in it. She was one of the, the interns for this year, um, and I thought she was quite good. Was she the one that got killed off at the start? Yeah, ah, that's the one I... Also the guy from Friday Night Lights. I don't, he's the, he's the Lights? only intern I don't like. I, I just, I don't See, like they, him. they've made him rubbish because of the Sandro O story. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't really... I feel bad for him because he was good before that. And I don't like the, the giraffe girl. She annoys me a little Oh, bit. yeah, yeah. She's ma- suddenly... Um, I think that character's just awful. Yeah, she's suddenly a lesbian I'm in love with. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah people change their sexual preferences far too often, <laughs> that show. Well... I, I do like the the English girl who isn't English in the show. Jo. Oh, all right. Is she in? I didn't even know she was in. She is, I And I only found this out because she plays Lara Croft in the newest Tomb Raider game. Oh, all right. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I quite like her. I hope she... There was rumours I heard in the Tomb Raider movie. Don't know if that will happen, but I'd like to see her doing it. Her name escapes me just now, but... I know who you mean. Um, she's very good anyway. What else do we have um, for the news? Uh, well, probably the... Oh, well, probably quite a big one is that Carrie Fisher, or Princess Leia, has confirmed that... Well, it's pretty much confirmed that her and Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford are going to be in the next new Star Wars movie, which is pretty... That's very good news. I, I, I personally, as a big fan of the originals, I'm, uh, I, I'm happy for that. I was kind of hoping they would have a minimal role. You know, I, I, I was hoping that they would be, you know, the story wouldn't be centered around them. You know, they'd be in at the start. They'd probably come in to save the day at the end. You know, uh, and all that sort of thing. Because I'd be happy seeing them. You know, in a sort of olden role. Um, I'm not so sure about, you know, certainly as the rumors suggest that the films are going to be based around them. I'm not sure how that sits with me. Yeah. But please, please is here back. I have to say, you know, and, and apologies if Carrie Fisher ends up listening to this, but um, she's looking a bit of a mess these days. <laughs> well, <laughs> have you seen her? Let's let's not go into uh, to too much about her, her recent past. But uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I heard she wanted the pretzel bun thing. No, cinnamon bun hairstyle back as well. Pretzel bun, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> pretzel bun. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Just let's let's ignore that. But <laughs> um, <laughs> who, who else has come from? Is coming back from the originals? Anyone else? Uh, Apart from the main three. I think Mark Hamill well, was offered it. I, th- I don't know if he's going back for it, though. Well, I think she said that all three of them are, but neither, oh, really? neither of the other two have said, because she said that they're all going into filming in March and April, I think, but they've not confer- it's not been confirmed that they are, but she's said in an interview that all three of them are going back. All oh, right. So. I thought it was just uh, her and yeah. Harrison Ford. I don't know. Um, all three. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'd want to see any, any of the other ones back. Not even, uh, not even R two D two. Oh, he'll be in it. They'll be in it. There's no reason. Oh uh, well, uh, I don't know. Are they going to get the same guys to do them? Obviously not R two D two because he doesn't speak. George R Banks. Oh, oh no. God. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see Samuel L. Jackson back in it. Didn't he die? How, how they get? It, how they going to do that? Uh, I don't know. Never actually died. Just fell out a window. <laughs> the Jedi. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's true. That's you know. true. But are you not are you not a bit afraid that having them for nostalgia effect is like a bit too kind of preachy, Try, trying to appeal too much to the fans of the originals? Yeah. Would, would you not rather just start fresh with uh, yeah, brand new characters? I, yeah, I get that view. I think that. I just think there's there they've got such an audience for people who watch the originals <laughs> that. It would be foolish not to try and get them in some way, you know. I mean, it's certainly Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. You know, it's not as if they're they've gone on to become you know global stars, you know, and they're too busy for the project or anything like that, or going to cost too much money. Harrison Ford possibly, but I think you know with the three of them, the you know for for fans of the original series, I th- I think they they had to bring them back. There'd be too much, um, especially if they came out and said, you know, we don't want them back. We, you know, we're going we're completely fresh. Um, direction. I think, I think there'd be a bit of outrage. I think there'd be people that, that wouldn't like it. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, I agree. I, I understand why they're doing it, but I don't know. I don't know if it's too sweet. Yeah, I, as I, I said, I, I'm not a huge fan of them having their, you know, the film being based around them. I think, I think it's gonna be too. I think it's almost gonna end up being like what's that film, The Expendables? You know, with uh, oh yeah, yeah, the sort of old, you know, and Stallone and Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis and you know. Sort of this this sort of old retired club coming back. To be fair, first Expendables movie, pretty good. Yeah, do you know what? It, enjoyable, enjoyable. But it, you know, it's more of a comedy, isn't it? And they can't turn yeah. Star Wars into that. I guess so. I, I do. Well, know, I, well nah. yeah. I, I I tell you what, I am quite looking forward to the the new Star Wars TV series. It's oh, are they doing that? They are. It's an animated mm. one, but it actually looks pretty good. Um, there was a was it a trailer that was released this week, or there was some there was some Star Wars news around it this week. I'm sure it was maybe some images or a trailer released for it. And do you know what? It actually looks pretty good. It's set between episodes th- uh, three and four. Right. Um, and it's I don't know if you ever watched the Clone Wars. Uh, no. not really. Nah, I I do you know I wasn't a huge fan either. I I watched a few here and there, but this is going to be a proper. You know, full-on drama. Um, well, when I say drama, you know, it's an animated ah, yeah, thing. Yeah. But you, you know what I mean. It's not going to be a sort of kiddie, cartoon-friendly version. Although, mm. in in saying that, it, the, the channel that's um, picked it up and is is producing it is, is Disney, the Disney <laughs> Channel. So. Well, it's, it's Disney that made. Them, yeah. So you, you wouldn't expect anything else. And the only other news I was going to say was I don't know if you guys did you guys ever watch Twenty Four? You know I do. <laughs> well, I don't know if you saw Stephen Fry is going to be in the new series. He's going to be the UK, I did UK prime, minister. prime minister, yeah. Which I think yeah. is going to be quite. I think it's going to be quite good. That that's pretty cool. I like that. Do you know? I I actually quite like Stephen Fry as an actor. I, he was in the he's in the second Hobbit movie as well, and he actually oh, does yeah. quite a good turn. Yeah, he's good on that. He's, yeah, he's he's not bad, and I'm happy to see him in Twenty Four. I don't know how the series is going to pan out. It's over twelve episodes this one, isn't it? Yeah. Apparently, they're going to cut jump hours between episodes, so. Yeah, like you say, I don't know how that's going to work, but... Mm. Is Chloe coming back? Yes, yeah, she's back. Her and... You've seen the pictures, her and Kiefer Sutherland have been filming in London. She's all ah, looking like okay. a goth now, like a big trench coat and everything. Damn it, Chloe! <laughs> yeah, I, I was never a huge fan of Chloe. She's a very kind of love-hate character, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Right. But I think you can have it back with not having her in it. I think 
like we're saying with Star yeah, Wars, no, you yeah, need to appeal course, to the original yeah. fans. I think she needed yeah. to do that. What about Tony Almeida? Did he die in the end? Did he not disband? I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember what happened to Tony. He was always my favourite. Do you remember the, the ridiculous way they brought him back after he died the first time? Spoilers, by the way. Was it After she was like 10 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've not seen it by now. now. No, they, yeah, they, his, heart, yeah, his heart hadn't actually stopped or uh, yeah, something yeah. random. I mean, I, I, yeah, it was, it was weird. He, you know, he died, um, you know, and was being written out the show. And it was a clear death, you know, to the point where he's in the morgue. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> you know, put, you know, he was he was on the stretcher, the sheet over him, put into the morgue, the whole lot, you know, because they'd intentionally, you know, they were meaning to write the character out. He was dead, you know, and then uh, maybe th- two or three seasons later, um, they brought him back, and I can't even remember the ridiculous way that they um, they did it. It was it was something like oh. He wasn't quite dead in the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just surprise. Tony's <laughs> back. Fair enough. You can get um, off-screen death sometimes, and they work out okay. But I don't know about an off-screen resurrection. Yeah, it's mm. it's almost you know as we were touching. That's on, kind of a big thing. Yeah, that, that's got to be shown. Well, yeah, it's it's like you know we're talking there with Star Wars, you know, and uh, Mace Windu, Samuel Jackson's character. You know, you could almost because you don't actually see him die, almost make up some sort of. You know, half half arse believable story that yeah. you know some sort of land, some sort of speeder caught him in the air or some or you know something like that. No, uh, he's a, he's a, like I say, he's a Jedi. He can do whatever he wants. Exactly. <laughs> Samuel exactly. Jackson, he can do whatever yeah. he wants. Yeah, to, yeah a bit of a fool's yeah. going to kill him. <laughs> yeah, Tony Almeida from Twenty Four isn't a Jedi, and I don't think he can do resurrections, but he did. And and, and I, I can't remember what happened to the character. I, I can't remember if he died or not in the end. No, I can't remember either. When's that back, Liam? Me. Pretty soon. Yeah, start of May, I think, so a couple of months yet. And that was it for the news. Okay, on to the Oscars, which is the 2nd of March, I believe. Yes, I think you're right. And, uh, I mean, are you guys staying up for it? Is, that, is, is award season general, you know, the, the Oscars, the Globes? Uh, is it, you know, are, are they kind of things you're, you're interested in? I mean, do you buy into them much in the results? There's definitely a place for it. I personally don't really care. I like what I like, and it's not always the same thing. I know the stuff that I have liked from this year isn't going to win. They're going to go for something that they liked for different reasons. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's pretty much nailed on. It's going to be 12 Years a Slave or American Hustle for Best Picture. Yeah. I, 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 think, I think it's guaranteed 12 Years yeah. a Slave. I don't yeah. think American yeah. Hustle will get a shot. Um, but I think I think both of Wall Street should have won. Or we, should win. I, I agree. It's, it, it's one that I... Out of, out of all the ones nominated... Um, Wolf of Wall Street was my favourite. Which you can read my review on it. Just click at the bottom and like that. Nice plug. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I was I was in absolute stitches for the whole film, and it's not. I can't think of another three-hour film that can I make mean, it. It's great, especially. Um, I mean, I love the part. You know, and this isn't spoilers as such, but um, you'll know the part I'm talking about, Stu, with the, the when country club where, when he's on the steps. Yep, yeah, it's. Ah, uh, that, that's the um, the country club scene. Yeah, that the steps, the steps, of the car, and all that sort of stuff. I've I've never heard laughter like that in this year. It's it's just crazy. Um, yeah. And if he if he doesn't win the best actor, at least I think it's shocking. Uh, I'll just I, they don't count for anything because is, that that was amazing. Has he won before DiCaprio? I don't think he has. No, that this will be his first. I think he should have won last year for Django uh, as supporting actor. I think he was nominated, but I think oh, who got it last year? I can't believe he's never won an award before. No, I know it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, Martin Scorsese never won anything for a, a long time. I think, was it Hugo that he won his uh, yeah, first Oscar yeah, for? Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he, he certainly picked something up for Hugo. But I, I know Scorsese was, was a long time before he got anything. Um, the, you know, because there was all this talk about how you know he wasn't being recognised and all this. And uh, But I, I, I'm surprised DiCaprio's never won an Oscar, not even in a supporting role. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's like a big thing that he's never. Yeah. Wow. Never that surprises me. It is surprising. Best supporting actor for last year. Christoph Waltz got it for Django. Oh no! I that I think that's fair. I I I, I uh, love Christoph Waltz in that. I don't know. I I think uh, I think DiCaprio was better. Mm. I thought I thought it was a. Don't get me wrong. Christoph Waltz is brilliant, but. Yeah. Yeah. I th- I think I think with the Oscars, the the one thing that they do for me is they sometimes highlight, certainly in years gone by, they certainly highlight films that I wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't have been on my radar otherwise. Not so much with the best picture category, 
Uh, although there's been a couple. This, 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 I know this year uh, Philomena is up for a number of nominations, including Best Picture. Yeah. That's one that at the cinema wasn't interested at all. But you know, due to the kind of um, the acclaim it's getting, I'm you know I'll probably catch it. But certainly in other categories, you, you know, I, I I like the documentary category. Um, sometimes the foreign film ones. Um, not not just in the Oscars, but for a lot of these awards shows, there's sometimes the categories that highlight you know different features to me that out that ordinary would have you know passed me by and i'll see something that'll kind of you know get me i mean certainly last year i don't know if you ever heard of film searching for sugar man yes um i was talking to my hairdresser about it, <laughs> believe it or not <laughs> wow um it's about a south african folk singer from like back in the day uh, is that right no no not quite it's uh, it, I, I assume you've not seen the film then no i haven't right I don't want to. I don't want to go into the film uh, because it is one of those stories that, you know, because it's based on a true story. If you go and look at it just now or look at it on Wikipedia, you know, it'll just it'll ruin it almost right, instantly okay. just by sort. Even just, I, I would urge even not even to look at the back of the box if you pick it up on DVD or Blu-ray, uh, because right, okay. it's almost like you want to go in knowing, you know, as least as possible about it. Um, and it, it was my. It ended up becoming my favourite film of the year. In, all categories last year I thought it was phenomenal oh. it, just a great story I would highly recommend it but make sure you watch it on, in good quality no downloads here people make sure you know it's, you get it on blu-ray um, and have some good speakers because the you know needless to say the soundtrack that goes along with it is great so uh, from your recommendation and my hairdressers <laughs> I'll definitely pick it up yeah what's all that about having your own hairdresser it's not like a private guy that comes to my house and then works in the barber shop. You, you see, you don't have a hairdresser then, David. Is that what you're telling us? Or? Well, no, I, I have a barber. I have a I have a barber shop <laughs> that I go to. Um, the way the way I Stu mean, was talking about hairdresser, I thought you were talking about you know a full on salon, you know where they you know wash your hair and style I it. I could do that. They're a good quality hairdresser. <laughs> uh, well, barber, whatever. Oh no, I, I I'm still in the sort of you know. Fiverr down at, I, I think it's a Turkish barber's I go to just down Oh, down no, down get that there. sorted, man. you got, you got to go full on. Really? Uh, how much, is, how much is a haircut? Uh, 15 quid. Pretty reasonable, I think. That, well, that's, that's not too bad. Five, Fiverr for me. I oh, bet what? you don't get chat about uh, judging for sugar, man. <laughs> do you know I don't? Do you know I have uh, the, the hey, barber... That's what you're paying for. <laughs> the, the, the barber I, I, um, I used to go to is actually... I uh, used to get a lot of good chat there. And uh, he was famous for actually being uh, the, the singing barber. Oh no, that's going to stop. I'd pay fifteen quid for. Uh, well, that, well, well and, th- and this was only a fiver. <laughs> this was only a fiver. Oh, um, oh. And he was, um, you know, you'd go into this barber, and uh, there was a few of them there. And this guy, he was the owner, and he also did, he, you know, he did the haircuts himself. Um, but he was, um, he was the, the campus guy you'd ever, you could, you could ever meet. And he used to blast on all all his tunes. Oh, please tell me it was Madonna. <laughs> oh, the, oh, there was everything. Oh, there, was, <laughs> there was Madonna. There was um, It's Raining Men. You had uh, all, all the classics. Do you know what? It, it was it was a great place, and you you know you always left there with a smile on your face. But the the greatest thing was, I, I mean, I remember one time going in. Um, I, I know we've gone way off track here. Talking yeah, Ben <laughs> podcast. Ab- brought to you by TV and film review. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll put we'll put a link to the barbers down below. <laughs> the um, the the play um, I'd gone in one Sunday morning, and uh, you know it was pretty quiet for him anyway. And he started off uh, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen came on, and um, you know it's just one of those songs that you know over the years every, everyone sort of knows regardless of generation, and uh, he started singing along to that. And then two or three other people, you know, just punters getting their haircut, started joining in. And then for you know, the whole barber shop ended up joining in in Bohemian Rhapsody. It was it was incredibly bizarre. Did you have Muppets popping up in the background? <laughs> yeah, that, that. Do you know what? I would have topped it off. I, I like how you're trying to to trying to link this into film some way. Nah, nah. Let's stick my hair <laughs> Here's a question for you then. Na- na- name. What's your top film that has hairdressing? Or a hairdresser in it. Um, On the spot. Grease. Uh, beauty school hairdressing. It's the same thing, isn't it? Mm. No. No. <laughs> uh. um. Oh, Sweeney Todd. Just talking about it ten minutes ago. Well, like half an hour ago now. But, is that, is that yeah. about a hairdresser? Yeah, he's a barber. Demon oh, Barber Sleep Street. Yeah. I've never seen it. Ah, oh, you need to watch it. It's so good. Uh, I don't know. Johnny Depp. 
bit of a wank. <laughs> <laughs> what were you, Liam? Fav- favorite hairdresser, film or TV moment? Oh God. Uh, also favorite favorite hairdresser. In <laughs> favorite hairdresser. <laughs> There's too many to choose from. That would be a podcast in itself. Do you get a lot of cup of tea at the hairdresser? No. Do you not? I do. My, uh, I, my do. Girl... I got offered. Well, I got offered tea or coffee. But then, to be honest, I'm paying more than 15 quid, so I wouldn't want to get offered tea. Yeah, my, my girlfriend was telling me when she goes in to get her hair, she gets, um, you know, she gets magazines and tea and coffee offered to her and in all sorts. Um, and I'm sure it's become a bit of a thing now where yeah, guys get whiskey. I'm sure I read that somewhere recently. Oft. Yeah. Behalf. Aye. Back to the back to the Oscars. Anyway, what I was going to say, I'm looking through the the ones for last year, and it was uh, before midnight. And just what you were talking about, never would have considered that film. That's right, um, yeah. And, until I'd seen that, and it was absolutely top. I loved that film. Uh, and I went back and bought the, the first two as well. Still haven't watched them right enough, but they're pretty long, so I've got an excuse. Yeah, before, before Midnight, it's um, it's pretty good. I thought it was the... I actually thought it was the weakest of the three. The, I think the first one is, is Before Sunset. Is that the first one? Uh, before Sunrise is the first before one. Before Sunrise. Um, my apologies. That's that was my personal favourite, um, and then Sunset, and then Midnight. I mean, all, all three of them are great, um, and I I just love the fact that there you know there's ten years between each film. Yeah, uh, it's what I like about it. It's very real. It's, it feels like a genuine like you're watching actual people. Yeah. Rather than watching a movie, it's it's pretty cool. You don't get that a lot. And I love the way that when they filmed it, certainly over the on on over the, all the films, they've. Um, if you've noticed, they've got these really sort of long, long scenes with no cuts, you know, and it's just great because you, you know that they've, you know, they've done that in sort of one take. I mean, sometimes you go five, ten minutes and you haven't, the camera has not moved or cut from, uh, you know, Ethan Hawke and uh, Julie Delpy. So you, yeah. know, you know that they've just done all that all in a one and it's just some great camera work and some great acting. Yeah, again, I, you know, three films that I couldn't recommend high enough. Yeah, very underrated. You never hear anyone mention them. And just general discussion, you know. I, I think Julie Delpy's very good. She's she's an actress that I remember after watching the Sunset, the second one. I thought she, you know, she was going to go on to do you know lots of big things and lots of you know mainstream um, Hollywood actors. I know she's done a lot in her own country, but I I thought she'd uh, I thought she'd done a lot. We'd do a lot more. But there, I th- I think it was be. Do you know what French actresses in general these days? There's a lot of them and a lot of really really talented ones that have came through over the last few years. Um, um, yeah, the girl from uh, Inception and Dark Knight Rises. That's the, uh, yeah, the Marianne Cotillard. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's. I mean, yeah, I mean, she's came through. She, she's been brilliant. And um, Melanie Laurent as well. From, she was in Inglorious Bastards. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, oh, she's been in. She's been in a, f- a few things recently. Um, there, there, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, uh, you know, French actresses that have, that have come through the grade recently, and they've, they've all been pretty good. Um, and I think it's a really good thing for French cinema as well. I think it went through... I'm not claiming to be an expert in any way on French cinema here, by the way. Um, but I think it's. Uh, I think for a long time it went through quite a, a barren spell or a case where you know it was producing good movies but it wasn't perhaps getting any recognition. Yeah, yeah. I think the French film industry over the last you know four or five years, it's um, really starting to grow. Um, and I think over the next... You know, five ten years, we're going to see a kind of real shift. I think we're already Possibly, seeing that yeah. shift from uh, you know American films to European ones. Um, have you seen a film called The Class? I haven't. Uh, is it Entre, Entre the Mur or something? It's called it's in, uh, French. But uh, was that your French yeah, the accent class. there coming in? <laughs> no, Entre that's, that's the Entre correct Lemur. pronunciation. But yeah, that is absolutely top. It won the Palme d'Or at uh, Cannes a few years ago. Uh, a friend of mine told me about it, and it is amazing. Another one that just seems so real. What they done? It was just real uh, school students, yeah. And one actor, one professional actor, uh, playing the teacher. I think he was also the director. Um, and it's absolutely amazing. I'll I'll have to I'll send you a, a DVD copy in the mail. It's it's so good. I like that, Stu. Us, using the mail. No. Yes. I don't. <laughs> None of this download. <laughs> yeah. What was the, uh, the other thing I was going to say? Oh, um, French actor. Uh, Jean Dujardin, oh, the guy from the artist. From the artist, yeah, that's right. Popped up in Amer- um, not American Hustle, Wolf of Wall Street. Didn't even realise until I was writing the review. You're joking? No, I, I, like I knew, I knew the guy, and I just couldn't place him. 
Uh, um, and because they never had the moustache, I, I didn't didn't recognise him. Yeah, he is superb in Wolf of Wall Street as well. Yeah, can I can I, can I just say for the record, by the way, the artist overrated. Yeah, I wasn't keen. Another one we were talking about last week, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I I just said before, I like the. I liked, I liked how they tried to do something a bit different and it was something I hadn't seen yeah. for a while, but overrated. Yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have won that year. Yeah. But, eh. And on that note, I think we're uh, we're just about done here. Yeah, like I say, I'll put everything we've mentioned in the link dump just down at the bottom of the article. And we'll hopefully have this up on iTunes and most other places where you can get your regular podcasts. We will. And remember, and check us out on um, Facebook and Twitter. Or check out the website, which is Facebook facebook.com forward slash tv and film review or we've got at tv and film review for those of you on twitter we also have a google plus which i assume is tv and film review (laughs) (laughs) um and uh, and do you know what hit us up on uh, our own twitter account as well i'm at david mcgregor 84 Stu, uh at the stew dog and liam at crisp underscore packet what was that all about by the way chris i have no i don't (laughs) even know i don't know where it came from any flavour in particular? What's it's maybe? Quavers? It's what's it's a flavour? Uh, prawn cocktail, randomly. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> and um, hopefully you can check us out on a podcast again next week and okay. make this a regular thing. Okay. See you later. Bye. 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 TV and film review.com. <laughs>